I go to Yahweh for mercy. And then if you look at, if you look at verse 2, it, it once again it repeats. What does it repeat? Before him I pour out my claim. Right? Before him I tell my trouble. Because God never lets go. When no one is concerned for you, and, and, and you look around and no one is at your right hand, God never lets you go. God cares for the brokenhearted. He cares for the fatherless. He cares for the widow. He cares for the poor. He loves you. And he never lets you go. What I've seen in, in life and, and what I think David is experiencing here is that spiritual battles take place in caves. Spiritual take, battles take place in the caves of life. Spiritual battles are won or lost in the midst of the times of suffering, in the midst of the times of pain, in the midst of the time of the unknown, in the midst of the time of loss. Do you quit or do you keep going? Do you worship or do you run away? I remember visiting Guatemala and uh, we were uh, going alongside this, this hillside. And, uh, and there, were, there were two caves along, along this hillside. And, uh, and as we went, as we walked along these paths to get to these caves, um, we, we heard this shouting and uh, this dance and this kind of these seances and, and all these kind of things. And, and we looked down and, and within one of these caves, there was a witch doctor. And, and for us, I mean for me, I, I've never seen any of that kind of stuff going on. And I remember asking the, the person who was leading us, I was like, what, what's going on? And he goes, well, the witch doctors worship in the caves. And as we walked along the path and then entered this cave where this other witch doctor was not, there were, there were candles everywhere and there were seances and all these kind of things. There were sayings. There was all these kind of, you know, a chicken bones that were done with sacrifices and all these kind of things within these physical caves. And it, and it, just, it just hit me as I was, I was thinking about what it is like when we're in caves Spiritual battles take place in the cave. Do we worship all the time? Only when life is good. David worshiped all the time. Our culture says to us, forget God. If he truly loves you, he would not have allowed that to happen. Right? Our friends will say, get the divorce. It's the easier thing to do. Our friends would say, our culture may say, why all this suffering? If God loved you, but God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God says, I love you all the time. God says, in fact, when you were still a sinner, I loved you. See, God never lets go. Even when we want to let go, God never lets go. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Those powerful verses in all of Scripture. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Why? Because of the Lord's great love. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And David cried out to God because God never lets go. And here's the second truth about God. Is that God knows the way. He knows the way. And, and let me just say this so I don't forget to say this. 
how we know, how we can trust that God knows the way is because He is the way. He is the way. John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. When you doubt that God knows His way, He is the way. And He is the way out of the cave. But we'll get to that the next week. We're not, we're not there yet. We're still in the cave. Sorry, I got too excited. Look at, look at 142 verses 3. Just remember, I mean, just think about David. He's, he, he's running. His life is on the line. I mean, he writes verses 3 and 4. When my spirit grows faint within me, It is you who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a sneer from me. I look to my right and see no one is concerned for me. I have no refuge and no one cares for my life. Think about David. Think about the the possibility of the situation that we talked about. That David is running from Saul. He finds refuge in this cave. We know that that's true. He is now in the cave. He feels that no one is concerned, no one cares. All, all these things that he is feeling and he's experiencing. And why is he in the cave? Why is he there? He only did right. He trusted God. He killed Goliath. He trusted God. He won battles. And, I mean, Samuel, the prophet, had anointed David to be king. So you would think, life is going to be good, right? I'm going to be king someday. And now he is in a cave, running for his life. And there's no refuge And there's no one who's concerned. And there's no one who cares. And people are pursuing him, verse 6. And there's no way out. There's no way out under his own strength. And he is there, possibly, because all he did was do right. Some of you are in the cave. And it's not because you did anything wrong. We always think, I'm in the cave because I've done something wrong. We always think, I'm in the cave because I sinned, and because I sinned, I'm in the cave, and that's the way God works. God, if I do good, then God will bless me. If I do bad, then God will curse me, blah, 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 blah. Where is that? The gospel is Jesus Christ has come to live and to die and to be raised from the dead so that you could live. And you are saved, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, not by your works, but by grace you have been saved. Not by what you have done. Why do you think it changes once you become a believer? Now sometimes we're in caves because we've messed up. Sometimes we want to be in caves because we don't want people to see what's going on around us. But you may be in a cave this morning. And you've only done the right thing. And you know what? Whether or not you've done the wrong thing, or whether or not you've done the right thing, you need to know God never lets you go, and God knows the way. He never lets you go, and He knows the way. He is the way. What we see in Psalm 142 is it is a relationship. What what we see is is David, a simple man, crying out to his almighty God. We we see a man that despite his circumstances worships 
God. He never quit. Sometimes we have to realize that the only one who can help is the same one who has allowed this dark time to happen. Think about that. In the times of suffering, we may want to reject God, you may want to ask all the questions, you may want to do all these things, and yet we're rejecting the only hope that we truly have. When you find yourself in a no-win situation, turn to the God who holds you, who never lets you go, and who knows the way out. Can the worship team come up? The last couple of months, we've had uh, somebody new come into our church, and their life is in a cave. As they came to our church, he was in the midst of a divorce. He lost his job. In the midst of all this, he puts his faith in Jesus. And he says, I'm going to worship. So we would think, well, now life's going to turn around. He's out of the cave. Until last week, when his only source of income left was destroyed in a fire. Some of you know about the fire in Lockton. What do we tell him? What would your life tell him? I'm pretty confident of what you would tell him. You'd say, well, let's keep worshiping God. Is that what he would see in your life? Because your life, your life will speak louder than your words. God never lets go. When you're in the cave, God never lets go. And he knows the way, for he is the way. Are you willing to live that? Are you, are you, are you willing Are you willing to surrender your life to the point that when you're in the cave, not when you see the hope of getting out of the cave, not not when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, not when you see, oh, all things are going to begin turning around, not, not any of those things. When you're in the cave, will you worship? Will you give praise? Will you say, I love my God. 